everyone. We're live. We are live. Welcome to Member Solutions webinar. I'm Miranda. I'm the marketing manager here at Member Solutions, and I am going to be your moderator for today's event. And I have the pleasure of introducing our topic and our speaker. Today's topic is why your prospects are ghosting you and what you can do about it. Today, we are going to talk about the sales process. We're going to do a deep dive into the follow-up that you should be doing once you receive new leads to make sure that you're able to get in touch with them, get them in for an appointment, and turn them into a new member. A lot of our clients at Member Solutions and the um, people we meet in the martial arts and fitness industries have a real challenge when it comes to engaging their leads. They invest a lot of, of money and time in extensive marketing strategies um, that are really complex, and they've got that working for them in a lot of cases. But the, the challenge they have is then actually getting in contact with those leads, getting them in the door, and, and converting them into members. So that's what we're really going to look at today. We're going to go in depth, like I said, into the follow-up process to the specific steps you need to follow and the techniques that you need to be applying. And we're going to tell you exactly how to do all of that because we have our sales expert, Eric Charles Russell, on today. Eric, you may know, is a sought-after um, sales consultant and speaker in the fitness industry. He has written the book, The Art of Selling Memberships, which I believe you can see behind you on yeah, the shelf. Yeah, I'm like, where's my copy? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, it's a great read. Um, it gives you a lot of the tactics that we're going to talk about today and a lot more detail as well. Um, and Eric has also created an online course and consulting program um, called the Membership Sales Academy. So an even more in-depth look at some of the topics we're going to touch on today. So uh, as we get started here, I just want to remind everyone that if you have questions, please go ahead and feel free to type them into the questions box on the control panel at any time. We'll do our best to try and get to some of those in, in real time as they're coming up. We actually, I am going to not only be your moderator today, I'm also going to be a, an active participant in the workshop. Hey. So <laughs> we're trying something a little different. I'll be going through this this educational program is the same as all of you. So if you have questions, I'm going to do my best to monitor those so we can get to them in real time and you can really get the most out of this possible as if you were at a live event with Eric. So um, awesome. I'm excited. If you if you want uh, to hear any other topics addressed and all right, Eric, I will um, turn it over to you. First of all, just to introduce the topic a little more, and we'll, we'll get rolling. OK, thanks. Yeah, um, I appreciate you having me. I'm excited to talk about this topic. Uh, it's weird. Membership sales is a passion of mine. Uh, it's a weird obsess obsession, I know, because most people do not obsess over selling memberships the way I have. Um, but when you grow up in the environment and your dad is a gym owner, you got to be good at it because you don't want to let dad down, right? I mean, it's uh, so it's one of those things where I, I started out, I wasn't so good, and I just was like, I, I got to get good at this. Um, and over the years, you learn some tricks, you learn some techniques, and then you also you, you establish a little bit of a, of a foundation because as time goes on, we have to adapt a little bit too, right? And so um, one of the big things when what we're talking about today is actually – getting a hold of clients, um, prospects I mean, getting a hold of prospects so that we can turn them into clients, we can turn them into members, because if we can't get a hold of them or we're not creating interaction there and engagement, the chance of us signing them up as a member is very, very slim, right? And one thing that you brought up, Miranda, that was um, that's interesting that is going on in our industry is the idea of this engagement thing. We are moving away from engagement. We're moving more towards let's automate this, let's automate that. And what we're what a lot of times I'm seeing is we're we're trying to make a business that's based on relationships a business based on transactions. And this is why what we're doing today is so so important uh, for you because it's going to help you strengthen your relationships with prospects so that ultimately they become a member. 
and help you zig while others are zagging, so to speak, right? So that's what we're going to get into. And, and another thing is, if you stick around till the end, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to organize your follow-up and what we call your lead flow in a way so that you're not trying to have to remember what do I got to do when, and, and it just automatically takes care of it for you. So if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you that. Um, and, and like Miranda said, answer any questions that you might have as we go. So with that being said, some of you know me, uh, you know, uh, Miranda gave me a great introduction. Always when you have a book, it kind of helps to with the introduction. Um, what's not super well known about me is that um, Club Industry, one of our trade journals in, in our industry, in the, in the fitness business and the club business, just released their top 100 clubs of 2019. Of those, four of the top five are customers, clients, and students of my sales process. Four of the top five. You're talking multi, multi billion dollar companies. In addition to that, 10 of the top 12 franchises on that list are also clients, customers, or students of my sales process as well. I'm not saying this to brag to, well, kind of, I guess I am bragging a little bit. Um, my point is that, yeah, but my point is that some very smart and sharp people in our business use this process because it works. They're good at making decisions. And what I'm going to share with you today are, are, are pieces of that process and the main piece is getting a hold of prospects and getting them to show up, which is a huge hole in a lot of our games in terms of the sales process. So yeah, with that like, being said. If I can say one more thing on this topic, it's it really can't be overstated how important this piece of the puzzle is. I know that a lot of people, they, they want to hear about closing techniques because they think, that's where the money's at, and, and that's what, where I get my members when we close. But you can't close someone you haven't been able to get on the phone or get to show up at your facility. So this is really that crucial first piece that you need to have before you move on to other techniques in the sales process. So that's why we're, what we're doing today is so important. 100%. And, and, it's, and it's funny, too, because if you look at your numbers, and we're big numbers people in, in sales, i got to know, you know what's showing up. And, but if you look at your numbers, you might only lose two to three people that you're face to face with. But how many are not showing up? That number's way bigger, right? And it just goes to prove the point what um, Miranda was saying. If you look at your own numbers, it'll tell you that, okay? So let's talk about it. First thing we're gonna talk about, follow up plan. What is the plan? You gotta have a plan. Without a plan, you're not gonna get anywhere. Right? When you teach your martial arts, when you when you do a first workout, do you have a plan? Answers yes. I know you guys are all gonna say yes, right? Put a yes in the chat box. <laughs> yes. Put yeses. It's gonna all fill up with yeses now. Right? <laughs> but the bottom line is we have a plan for everything that's successful in our business. If we are going to be successful at getting a hold of prospects, we have to have a successful follow-up plan. Okay, see the yeses are coming now. And it's Miranda's a little difficult to hear. That's okay. I'm I'm blowing out my microphone. That's why. See, I got this thing, I'm just blowing it out right now. And I apologize. There I'm we go. So soft spoken. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> so the bottom line is this. We gotta have the plan. Here is the plan. When a prospect comes in, the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to get back to them quickly. This is not rocket science. I'm sure everybody in here has heard this. We got to get um, we got to get hold of people quickly. Within five to fifteen minutes is the window that we're looking at. We can't always do that. We're we're doing a workout. We're teaching class. We're maybe we're we're on the phone with somebody else. Maybe it came in as a as a um, as a web lead or something along those lines. So we, we don't always, we're not always able to do that, okay? But that's the goal, that's what we're working towards. We're trying to get, um, we're trying to get back to them quick as possible. Sorry, I gotta turn my phone off. We're live, by the way. So, <laughs> there we go. Like so we gotta, that could be a lead. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a lead right now and I'm not gonna get back to them right away. So see, now I gotta get my power in place. So the bottom line is, that we got to get back to them quickly. If we do that, 
we, the first person that gets a hold of this prospect, very important, the first business that gets a hold of the prospect is going to get 50% of the business that's out there looking to become a member. Now, this is, a, this is not a, st a statistic I'm just like pulling out of thin air. This was actually a sales optimization study that was done by a company called Velocify that showed the first business that gets a hold of them is going to get 50% of the business. And the reason why this is happening is because when you get contact a prospect, on some level, they already feel like their problem's getting solved. So everybody else becomes background noise and becomes irrelevant. So we've got to make it a point to get a hold of them quickly if we can't get a hold of them first then. And how do we do it? Okay, get your pens and papers out. You got to write this down because I'm not putting a slide up. I'm not, we're going podcast style with this. Three phone calls a day. Three, okay? Then I'm also going to send a text every single day and I'm going to send an email every single day okay so three calls a day the first call I'm leaving a voicemail the other two calls I'm trying to catch you live I'm doing this every day for five days straight the last day the sixth day I'll send a, a, a text where I'm hey are you still looking for are you still looking to get in shape are you still looking for lessons for your child? Are you still whatever it is that they're looking for? Are you still looking dot, 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 whatever that particular thing is, okay? That doesn't mean I stop following up, okay? It just, if you go five days in a row and you call them three times a day, you send a text, you send an email every single day, that means you have reached out to them 25 times. Okay, again, going back to that sales study, if you don't get a hold of your prospect within the first five to 15 minutes, it's gonna take you eight to 12 attempts to get an appointment with them, eight to 12. Most of us aren't doing three. Be honest with yourself and, and, and really look at what you're doing. And that three is taking us two weeks. We're getting the eight to 12 attempts within the first two days. Okay, I want to beat my competition to them because I know that just by making that connection, I'm giving myself a competitive advantage. Okay, does that make sense? I have a question here that I think maybe some other people are thinking that this sounds like a lot of follow up, and I understand why, but I'm just thinking from a practical standpoint. You know, people have busy schedules. How are we supposed to fit all of this in for every single prospect? Yeah, it is a lot of follow-up. You're 100% you're correct, right? See, nod and yes and look. Yeah. You're, you're with the people, Miranda. I'm glad, guys. I'm not alone. <laughs> you're, you're, you're with the people, right? <laughs> it is a lot of follow-up. Yeah. If you, first of all, get to the end of the week, that's number one. Almost never happens, man. Ma'am, sir, madam, it never happens. Eight to 12, you're beating your competition to them. I'm not, when I say never, I'm, I'm exaggerating it a little bit. There will be prospects you don't get a hold of, okay? When you do this follow-up plan, though, very rarely do you get to the end of it. You're usually getting a hold of somebody, okay? And, and, and don't think, well, it sounds like I'm going to annoy the hell out of people. You're not. They need you to get a hold. People are busy. They appreciate you following up more than they think you're annoying. They raised their hand and said they were interested. That is why you can follow up, okay? So here's the thing. It is a lot of follow-up, but do the math. I talked about math earlier. How many leads do you have right now that are open? Yeah, type in the chat, how many leads are you working with right now that are that that are just open leads? I'm not saying that you got today or tomorrow, just you have open leads, maybe you got 20, maybe you got 30, I don't know. What are you guys working with in terms of leads right now that are open? You haven't been able to book an appointment with them, or they haven't shown up, and you didn't close them. What do you got? And I see there's a question. That's a good question, Ryan. I'm going to answer that question for you, too. What's the best time to contact people? Okay? 
Well, what do you got for least? 15, there's one that's 15, 30 to 60, 21. Okay, let's take 60. Let's take 60 leads. Right. Okay, oh my, Eric, you're telling me to call 60 people three freaking times a day, you're nuts, dude. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do some math real quick. You're gonna leave a voicemail on the first call. That voicemail is gonna take you approximately 30 seconds to leave it. It's gonna take you another couple seconds to call them. We're, let's say we're all in on this voicemail at let's go two minutes we'll really exaggerate it out don't ever leave a two-minute voice no please okay, okay. But let's say it's two minutes that means your first set of calling all 60 of those people two minutes times 60 is how many minutes 120 minutes did i do the math right yeah. oh i did because it's embarrassing if i didn't it's gonna take you two hours okay 41 seconds for a voicemail. There you go. There you go. Yeah. I like this Ryan guy. He knows his yeah. stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going, I'm going crazy with it. I'm going two minutes. It's going to take you two hours at the absolute longest to call 60 leads and leave a voicemail. Mm -hmm. Two hours out of your day. Okay. Now, if you say, well, I don't have the two hours, you book them in there. You got to have the two hours. This is your business. This is your livelihood. You got to put it in your schedule. So if that means you got to show up a little bit earlier, cool, make it happen. You got to make the adjustment so that you get to them before somebody else does. Here's where I like to remind myself: I've already paid for these leads. Right. I've spent the money, right? I, I already bought them. Now I need to do something about it. So I have to make that time, like you said. Absolutely. You you paid for it. You got to get a hold of them. So now that's the first set of calls for the day. I spent a whole two hours of my life. And by the way, this is my life, calling people, right? <laughs> now, the second time I try to reach out to them, I'm not trying to um, to actually, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not leaving a voicemail the second time. It's not happening. I'm just trying to catch them live. That's gonna take me about six seconds. And to Ryan's question about timing, when are you doing this second call and the third call as well? Yeah, I'm going to get to that. But I want you to do the math first. How long is six seconds times 60? I didn't get a hold of anybody. That's 360 seconds? Am I doing my math right? Mm -hmm. Okay, how many minutes is that? 60 goes into – that's like what? Like six minutes? minutes? Yeah. How many minutes is it? Yeah. I think it's only six, six minutes. minutes. Right? So the second attempt where you're not talk, you're not leaving voicemails is going to take you a whole six minutes of your life. Guess what's going to happen on the third time if you got a hold of nobody? 60 leads, same thing, 360 seconds. It's going to take me six minutes. Okay? You got the time. It's It looks like a lot more than it is. You know what's more time consuming? Following up with somebody over the course of two months, three months, and da 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 and you know what's more expensive? Never getting them in. Money that you just literally throw out the window because you paid for them on some level. Maybe you, maybe you ran a Facebook ad. Maybe it was a referral, which also is, costs money. And, and then we think those are free. But you doing business, there's a cost to it. All, all marketing, all leads, there's a cost to you. You, you want to make sure you understand what those different costs are. But the bottom line is when somebody raises their hand, there's two costs to it. One, the direct cost it took for me to get them, and two, the cost of not signing them up. And when you put the two of those together, I paid money to get them, and I didn't sign them up, it's crazy numbers, okay? So it is important that we dedicate and we commit to a follow-up plan that's gonna get a hold of them. If they don't have a voicemail, or like Ari is saying, um, the voicemail is full, this is where the email and the text follows along the same lines of our voicemail, okay? Which, by the way, hi Ari. I know Ari. He's a new. Uh, he's one. He's one of our clients on the on the new client on the side of the Membership Sales Academy. Good to see you in here, man. Um, so that's important. What times do we call them? Look, I don't know the perfect time. Okay. 
I mean, I don't know the perfect time. That's why I follow up like a madman because I don't know the perfect time. I will call and, and listen, back in the day when I was launching my gyms, I would call when I was done teaching my last class. Sometimes that was pretty late at night. But I didn't care. Because you know what you know what goes on now in 2000 and, well, back then it was 2005. They don't answer their phone if they don't want to talk to me. And by the way, almost nobody's going to answer their phone the first time you call them. Almost nobody. They don't know you. They don't recognize the number. Even if they did, they're like, this can't be the gym. I just, there's no way they're calling me back that quick. They're not answering it. They don't even believe it's you when you do a good job. But we're going to handle that here in a second. Okay? So everybody got that? The follow-up plan, yes, it looks like a lot of work. What we're doing is we're trying to maximize and be efficient with what we're doing. I hated, when I was selling memberships, I hated the constant follow-up over an extended period of time. This gets it done like within a couple days. You aren't going to have 30, 60 leads lagged out, 20 leads. You're not going to have that lag. You're getting a hold of people, and when you're getting a hold of people, you're going to get more that are going to show up, and obviously face-to-face, -face, you're going to do better with closing them as well, okay? So that's important. Three calls a day, one voicemail the first time I call them. I text them, and I email them, okay? The texting and the email, you can just, it can just be automated, uh, automated so you're, you're not worrying about personally doing that, okay? Um, did I answer all those? People don't check their voicemails anymore. We're gonna we're gonna get into the voicemail thing here in a second. What else we got? Best window. Okay, answered that. Okay, cool. There's a couple good questions here that just came in about um, for leads from your website. Should the first contact be over the phone? So is this a process any different for leads from different sources? No. So when a lead becomes a lead. Email, text, boom, gone. Like right away. Yep. You can automate those so they'll go out immediately. As automatic as you can. In other words, if your website isn't tied to your 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 software that you're you're managing your members with, then you may have to do it manually. Like when a lead comes in, boom, you 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 put them into your flow and that's when they get it. You want to try to do it as automatic as and as quick as possible. But um those go out automatically. So a lot of times they'll those will beat you to it, right? Beat you to the phone call. <laughs> and then you make the call. <clears throat> but you want the call to be just as rapid and just as immediate, depending, again, on what you got going on. If you're doing the whole show, and I've been in this boat, where I'm teaching all the classes, I'm doing the, the sales, um, answering phone calls, I'm doing email. I'm teaching a class. I can't get back to an email. I can't I can't get back to a phone call right away. Okay? I'm going to hit it as soon as I'm done with whatever I'm doing. Okay? But I'm not changing that process. No. I got to get them on the phone. Okay? Um, different for dead cold leads. That's a good question. So is the process any different for dead cold leads? Okay, they're not a dead lead unless they actually died, okay? That, that's the, just a rule I have. <laughs> that's maybe, maybe a little hardcore thinking. But. A, little, a little dark. But All right. Well, it's Halloween. You know, we're, we're, we're in the Halloween theme. Um, but here's how we, how we handle the older leads. One, we're always dealing with newer first. We, we're always dealing with newer first. Keep that in mind, okay? Always call the newer ones first. Now, let's say I got 10 leads, and it took me 20 minutes to get to all of them. Well, I book out two hours of my time to call leads in the front end of my day. So I still got another good hour and a half. Now I'm going to call some of these old dead leads or cold dead leads. Okay? I'm going to put them in the mix as time allows. Will I go back three years? If I can get to them in an hour and a half, I will. What else am I doing? What else is my business about? Getting people in so I can help them. Help them lose weight, help their kid do better in school, help their kid be more focused, help them feel better about themselves. 
I'm on a mission with this. You got to be on it. That's another thing. You got to be on a mission with it too. You know what I mean? They're standing in a burning building. How are you getting them out? Are you going to just sit back? Okay, well, fire's going to go out at some point. No, you're going to go save them. You're going to do whatever it takes, right? These people are, are literally, you know, the, the standing in a burning building. If they don't do, if you don't do something and don't help them, it could be very, very bad on a lot of levels. Whether you're teaching kids martial arts, we all know about the bullying situation. Um, we've had situations in our town that are heartbreaking in terms of what has happened and who's come to us. Some of it made national news, craziness. And when that stuff happens, you just you just get committed to, to doing whatever it takes. So am I going to have the excuse of, well, I'm not going to make nine calls to this person because they're probably not interested? No, because that tenth one might be the call. So I will go back, provided that the time allows it. Until they tell me to stop, I'm going to keep calling them. Right? I, I did a talk in Phoenix, Arizona. I got the same question. I said, when do you stop? I go, when they sign or they whine. Either they whine about me calling them too much or they sign up. That's it. Otherwise, I'm doing it. Okay? They came to me. They're coming to you. Okay? What else we got? Time frame for voicemail to call the call. Suggested in between time frame from voicemail to call to call. That's a good question too. So if you think about this, one, part of it has to do with your day. The other part of it is think about what's going on with your prospect. One thing I've always done is what's happening with my prospect? We're gonna go over the phone conversation that we have with a prospect or the lead conversation. This blows people's mind when I when we go over this a lot of times because we don't do it that way. But then they hear it and they go, we should totally be doing it that way. Well, I can't believe we're not, right? Because I always have looked at it from the prospect side of things. How can I help them with their hesitation, with their fears, with what's happening in their life and somehow get on their radar for them to keep moving forward with me? So as it relates to the phone calls, how do I make phone calls so that I know I can connect with them? If I'm getting in early in the morning, they might be working. Okay. So now I'm going to think, okay, let me try them at lunchtime. Right? When's my next one? Oh, I'm going to try them. Maybe they're working a nine to five. I'm going to try them at eight. Okay. Or whatever it is. That's why my late night calls after I was done with everything. We're so effective. First of all, nobody expects me to call them at night. They're almost like, this has to be like an emergency or I won I won National Clearinghouse or something, right? <laughs> they don't expect it. And so when you do, it's like, oh, my God, this is the only time I, I'm even available. Um, it's awesome. It works really, really well. And you got to get yourself up a little bit. So you, I went back earlier when I said, why are you doing it? What's going on? Think about your purpose for doing it, right? Well, I make a late night call. That gets me the purpose of why I'm in this business, the purpose of why I teach what I teach. Why do I get people in shape? Why do I help kids get focused? Why do I do those things? There's a purpose to it. Grandiose, big deal purpose to it. It's not just because I want to get paid. I want there's I want to help people on a level that they can't even help themselves on. I want to, I want, I, in me, I've had changes happen that I want to help other people with. I will call you at 10. I will get pumped up. I'll put on some dang tool. The new album's out. I will rock that freaking album, and then I'll start making some calls. <laughs> and then I'll, you know, I'll have trouble sleeping because I'm all pumped up. <laughs> all right, so. Well, it's it's great, too, that you're calling those times because those are the times of, the classes that they'll probably want to go to as well it really lines up with, with what you're going to do for them. Okay. Exactly. See, I didn't even yeah. think about that. And look, I've been doing it 30 years. All right. <laughs> but it makes I, sense. Yeah. I want to point out, too, that Ari said um, they call on Sundays and that seems to be working well. So just just thinking about when people are available makes a lot of sense. It seems to be working. Right. And think about it. Take a couple hours. 
on a Sunday. If that's what it takes, because pretty soon you're not going to have leads on Sundays because you got them all wrapped up. Okay. Good questions out there. Yeah, so many great questions. Uh, I, I know there, there might be a couple more that we'll try to get to maybe at the end, but I wanted to go back and ask specifically about some of these communications that you've got going out. Um, for instance, the, the voicemail, the email, the text. What's the, what's the wording? What should we be saying on those calls specifically? Okay, that's a, that's a good question, and, and, and it's an important one. Um, a couple things with the voicemail. One, and it, and it came up, Ryan asked this as, 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 as something uh, along these lines. Um, do we leave a voicemail each day for five days if they don't answer? Anytime I call them the first time, I always leave them a voicemail. But it's important to, to understand this. The voicemail that you leave never changes. When I call you on the fifth day, when I call you on the you, you know, you're a three month old lead. When I call you that third month, um, if that exists, it shouldn't exist in your world after you follow this, but let's say it happens. I'm calling you like that's the first voicemail I left. That is the trick to be able to leave this. What's that? Like it's the first one? Like it's the first one. Okay. Because here's the thing I don't want that. They probably didn't listen to the other ones anyway. So to them, it is the first one. Just because it's the 900th one for you doesn't mean you got to make them feel like a, a bad person, right? Oh, you know, I've been trying to call you, and you have not been answering. You know, I called you three times already. You know, da 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 Don't put baggage in there. It doesn't matter. Hey, this is Eric from XYZ Fitness. You submitted some information to us uh, uh, online and wanted us to reach out to you and give you some info on our, our programs, that's what I'm calling to do. So when you get the message, give me a buzz back. Here's my number. And by the way, uh, if you don't get a chance to call me back, don't worry about it because I'm going to try you again later. Mm. Okay. I just gave you the voicemail, but what's that? So you're giving them an out. Yes. So they can get back to you. Right, so a couple things with the book. That's actually the script that you're gonna use, okay? I'm gonna go over that again in a second, but there's some important things in that script that I need to point out, okay? One, again, like I said, that's the same thing I'm gonna leave. So the trick is being able to, to get yourself to leave that voicemail on day five like you did on day one without any like, hey, it's Eric, <laughs> fifth one, right? Same thing every single time. Now, we've got to call and we've got to identify ourselves because, see, like I said earlier, people aren't answering their calls. Why? I don't Why think don't they answer? People I don't know. Right. Decline. I don't know that person. Right. You don't know who it is, so they're not important in your life. You're not going to answer the phone. Right? Now, if it's somebody that you know, you – well, depending on how you know him, I guess, right? You might decline that one, too, if you know him. Like, oh, I ain't talking to this guy. He's just nuts, right? But there's other people, like, if my daughter's if my daughter's called me right now, actually, it would freak me out. I'd probably interrupt this whole webinar and answer the phone because they're that important to me. And if they're freaking calling when they know I'm busy, and by the way, they never call. It's text and then call, right? <laughs> It, it, it has a different meaning. I know who it is. I know what they're calling. It. I know what I even know what they're calling about. Something's something's up. They need something. Right. Hopefully they're not calling on me. Hey, can you send me money? Right. That's usually text too. Now that Facebook, you can send money through Facebook. Do you know this? You send money through Facebook. I hate that. I hate it. Cause I got more going out. My kid. Hey, can you Facebook me some money? What? Anyway. All right. Hold another tangent. Um, but the bottom line, you have to identify yourself. Nothing new there in life. You're always identifying yourself, right? We're identifying ourselves so that the next time we call, they know it's us, right? The other thing is we're letting them know, hey, look, I know you're busy. We're saying call us back, but they're not going to. But we do want to let them know it's okay because if you don't, they won't. And there is a small, really small chance that they might. So. Tell them to call you back, okay? So when they do that, 
or when when that happens, I also want to let them know that, hey, it's okay if you don't call me back. This is the thing we miss. If you call them and you didn't say it's okay for them to not call you back, they're probably not going to answer your call again because they feel guilty. Again, how do I know this stuff? I'm flipping it over and I'm thinking from the prospect side of it. Think about if somebody told you to call them back and you did it. And now here they are calling you again. Oh, damn. I don't want to seem like an a-hole. So I'll just decline this and I'll call them when I get a chance. Could be totally innocent. They just don't want you to think they're that kind of person. Well, in the voicemail, if we leave that and we let them off the hook that, hey, it's okay if you don't get back to me. Now it's like, now I can call them and they're going, oh, okay. Guy said I didn't have to call him if I didn't get to it. It lets them off the hook. And then the final piece of it, I'm calling you again. <laughs> they got to know you're going to call them again. You're going to keep calling them. Yep. All of those things add to them picking up the phone. Okay? So the voicemail script one more time. Hi, this is Eric from XYZ Fitness. I was calling because you requested some information about our programs. I wanted to give you that information. Very simple. When you get the message, give me a call back at XYZ number. If you don't get a chance to call me, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm going to try you again later. And I'm going to drive by your house. No, don't do that. Part. Not that last part. I yeah, that's the scare them, right? Right. We're trying not to scare them, right? That's right. the whole idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Now, the next time we call them, they have a familiarity with it, with who we are, potentially. I'm not saying, uh, you know, you're going to get them to pick up the phone the second time every single time. This is why you still got to play the statistics. Eight to 12 attempts got to happen. You got to commit to that. If you can do better, great. But you've got to commit to at least being in the ballpark of being successful. If you stop short, then you don't give yourself a chance. You stop at five, you're not even in the average. Okay? So you've got to make that commitment to get to that. Okay? So thinking about the next step in the process. So we've, we've covered the, the follow-up plan that we need to have, and we've talked through how we're practically going to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. We're going to set time aside. We're going to make our three phone calls. We're going to have our, our emails and our text messages going out. And when you describe the script for the voicemail, it sounds like your main focus is getting them on the phone. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm just wondering, and maybe other people are too, why are we doing that? Why are we getting on the phone as opposed to just saying, meet me at my, at my school or my gym? Why are we not trying to go straight to the appointment? Yeah, so this goes back to one thing I mentioned earlier about engagement. This is happening. This is, this is what's going on. Hey, book online, go into my calendar, go into my calendar or whatever calendar they're using. And they let people book themselves into a time and that's it. That's their appointment booking process. Okay. But it's getting away from relationships. What I say earlier, this is a relationship business. This isn't transaction business. We will get transactions from our relationships, but not, not the other way around. Okay. So the thing that's important here is We've got to make a connection as soon as we can make it. And, and that is when somebody's the most interested, when they book an appointment. Now, here's one thing, too, to keep in mind. You can do the online calendar booking. Cool, whatever. Do it. But when somebody books it, you still got to call them. You still got to get them on the phone. We are in a relationships business. If you think you're not... First of all, you're wrong. All right, I'm just going to be straight to the point. You are wrong on that. <laughs> no <mince> words here. <laughs> right. You've got to, because they've got to keep coming back. They've got to enjoy what you do. You've got to get them results. There's, there's a lot of things 
that go into what we do. All of them are revolved around relationships, okay, and building those and building upon those. So we've got to start with having that initial conversation of getting them on the phone so that they can feel comfortable about us, about showing up, about what we do, all of those things. It doesn't happen over text. It doesn't happen over email. Okay? It doesn't happen. Try having a purely text relationship with somebody. Just try it. See how it goes. Okay? You report back to me. All right? It's, it's just not going to happen. Okay? I feel like that is when you get ghosted. I feel like that's why we're having this webinar because relying on something like that, I, even if we, you know, think about the metaphor to relationships, romantic relationships, that's when you get ghosted, when your relationship is via text message and it's too easy to just walk away from that, you haven't made a real connection, it's too easy to just not respond. Right. That's what's happening with your prospects. I and you will not, yeah, you will not show up for a stranger. But will you do that for a friend? Will you do that for somebody who you got on the phone with and they actually helped you through something? Chances are a lot lower. Okay? And it also sets the tone for who you are and what you're about as a business. And people want to do business with, with businesses that make them feel comfortable and that help them get through whatever fears and apprehensions they have <clears throat> about working out, about training, about bringing their kid in, okay? We talk about adults and the, and the workout and all that stuff, but kids, parents go through it with kids too, right? They have fears about bringing their kid in, and most of it's based on the parent. Well, I don't want to bring my kid in there. They, they want the kid to get help because he's got ADHD and he's crazy psycho and he acts like Eric. Right? He's nuts. But I don't want to bring my kid in because he's going to be wild and he's going to embarrass me. So when the time comes, well, I'm going to get him in soccer because kids run around, they kick things. Can't really tell he's who he is. Right? He doesn't need soccer. Right. He needs martial arts. And the bottom line, exactly. But because I'm afraid to bring my kid in and be embarrassed as a parent, because what are they going to think? I'm a bad parent. They're not going to realize my kid has ADHD, has a real problem, and they're just going to associate that with me being a bad parent. And so you get ghosted. You think a parent wants to admit that to you? Do you think that's really happening out there, though? Okay, it is. I'm telling you it is from experience. And you know it is, too, if you have any experience in this business and dealing with parents and kids. Okay? So we've got to reassure the parent that, hey, listen, you think your kid's nuts. You should have seen the 20 other kids in here that we started with. They're all the same. Oh, you hear them like sigh of relief. Like, well, oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's why they come to us, ma'am. Okay? We help with that stuff. It's okay. He's going to fit right in. Trust me. So I got pads on the walls, actually. All right? <laughs> okay? But, but you just took a parent who was afraid of being embarrassed. And, and afraid of looking like somebody who uh, isn't a good parent to going, oh, my God, this sounds like the community that I need to be in. Right. Right? Now, you're telling us what we need to be doing. We need to be having these genuine conversations, allowing people to open up to us. But what are maybe some of the mistakes that we've made unwittingly or because other people have told us we ought to be doing it that have maybe disrupted this process? So we should be having this open conversation, but what have we done instead that was maybe a mistake? Okay, good one. So here's the thing with it. We'll do two things with this. One, we'll talk about the mistakes. And then how about if we do this? How about if... We do like a live role play almost. You'll be the prospect and I'll be Eric, the grandmaster. Yeah. How's that? Let's do it. Yeah, let's okay. do that. So first thing is let's talk about the mistake and, and, and point this out and really emphasize this. And it's a mistake that we do in good, with good intentions. That's why it's hard for us to recognize it a lot of times. We think about the prospect in our terms. Okay, I'm a gym owner, multi-unit gym owner. Um, 
I used to go to boxing gyms where they would literally beat the crap out of me. I would still show up. I'm not normal. Most of you owners out there, you're not normal either. That's why you own a freaking gym, okay? You're not normal. Most of your prospects are never going to own a gym, right? They're never going to own a studio. They're not like us. They're scared. And so what we think, though, is we think that prospect wants to train with the best. They want to know that they're with somebody who is super high level, expert, master, whatever. Okay? And they don't care. Not only do they not care, but those things scare them. And think about it in your own experience. Have you ever had a prospect say to you, well, I think I need to get in shape before I come see you? We've all done it because we've all fallen into this trap of talking about how great we are and talking about how awesome our stuff is, even though I know it is. We can't put that up front because that is scary. These are beginners. These are people who are nervous about working out. These are people who are nervous about their goal. And now here you are talking about how you're the greatest thing on the planet. And they're going, oh, man, I'm not worthy of this. Or I'm going to show up and everybody's going to look like a beast. And I'm, I'm out of shape over here. Or what I talk about with the kid, right? I'm going to bring my kid in there. Every kid's going to be so well behaved and so like, yes, sir, no, sir, da, da, da. And my kid's going to be like, F you, Mr. So-and-so sensei. Not realizing that those 20 that are saying yes, sir, right now used to be like that kid. Right? So we're scaring them on the front end by talking about how great our program is. Members care about that. Prospects don't. Remember, those are two different people. Somebody who's in, now that they're in, they're going to tell everybody how great you are and all these things. But the prospects are, you've got to, you've got to allay their fear. You've got to help with their apprehensions. That's how you get them to show up. If we're talking about how great we are, that's going to be a problem. That's going to affect their show up rate in a negative way. Okay? Because you're talking to people <clears throat> who are going to show up no matter what you said. Us, in other words. But that's not how you make your money. You don't make your money on us, owners, future owners. You make your money on the average person who is actually afraid to show up, afraid to work out, afraid of uh, being embarrassed. Those are the people that we got to deal with. Okay, so why don't we do a little role play? This and, okay. and I think that'll help with this. Are you ready for it? Okay, I, don't be too hard on me. Okay, I've, I've only been doing this for thirty years, so you know, uh, don't throw something at me. I've never heard. I'll, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> okay, and then um, then what I'll get to is I'll I'll show everybody um, how to organize their their lead flow and and give you kind of a quick overview with that. Okay, sound good? Okay, cool. All right, so I did my follow-up. I left my magic voicemail, which, by the way, I call it the magic voicemail script. I left it. I finally got a hold of Miranda. I got her on the freaking phone. She's been ducking me, but now she's like, I got to answer this guy's call. I want to work out. I've been putting it off. He's been following up. He's been doing great. Okay, so I call you. Miranda, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing great. By the way, how are you? 3.2 times more likely to get an appointment when you ask people how they are. I'm going on statistics again. I don't remember the study on that one, but 3.2 times more. Asking somebody how they are. That now, if you ask them if, the three words. Yes. Now, if you ask them if they have time for you, your a chance of booking an appointment goes down significantly. They don't know how long it's going to take. They assume it's going to take forever. Don't ever ask anybody if they got time. Contrary to what anybody and any trainer out there has said, and they, they say it, but I go again by statistics, and you can look these stats up. I don't even – just look it up, okay? Don't ask them if they got time. Ask them how they are, okay? Okay, all right. I'm done. I'm going to get in the role play here. I'm trying to teach in the middle of it. I'm fine. You just hung up on me, Miranda, all right? It's over. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You're awesome. Well, great. Um, I'm calling because you requested some information about our um, programs. So I wanted to get you that information. Quick question for you on it. 
Um, have you ever trained before? Or is this something totally new to you? I, I'm brand new. Never tried anything like this. Okay, great. Well, that's awesome. Listen, most people that call us are brand new. Okay, we're very beginner friendly. So, and here's the key. So you have nothing to worry about. Okay? Good. I honestly feel much better. I, I know this is a fake scenario. <laughs> Already? <laughs> I, I actually feel relief. <laughs> Good. So I let me ask you this then. Yeah. And here's what's interesting. You can hear it in people's voices. It's almost like a sigh of relief, like, oh my God, I'm kind of nervous about this. And and what did I say? I said, you don't have to worry. You know why? Because everybody comes to us new. So you don't have to worry. Telling them they don't have to worry, it sounds weird. But when you do it, it gives them a sense of relief. You don't have to worry about it, okay? So let me ask you, Miranda, why are you looking to, to work out? What's, what's the goal you're looking to accomplish? What are you trying to do here? I, I want to I wanna get in shape. I want to be healthy. Awesome. Great. Well, you called the right place. I mean, that's kind of what we do, right? In fact, it's the number one reason why people call us is to get in shape. So, again, key, I got to sum it up. I got to reassure them so you're going to fit right in with everybody else. Same thing I told the parent about their kid. So now you're now what are you seeing when you show up to the place? We've only we've only covered two sentences, two questions. Four sentences total. It's gonna take a grand total of two minutes. If that, right? But what what did we do for Miranda already? When she shows up, she's not gonna see all these experienced beasts throwing weights around, doing crazy flip kicks right things that are way over her head and scary for her you know who she sees who do you see when you show up at the gym people who are like me right people yourself you see the same things i do right that's what you're that's what's going to help you feel confident about showing up and we're crushing two of the fears one inexperience of being a beginner and two not um fitting in with everybody else being the only one who's out of shape Okay, you guys following us with this? All right, now, we got those two questions out of the way. Now, the third fear is the fear of being sold. That's the scariest one of all, right? Especially when you're talking to me on the phone, you're like, oh man, this guy, he's gonna sell me when I get there. I know he is, look at this dude, right? The fear of being sold is real, we've got to address it. And how do we address it? They're thinking, well, they're trying to get us to come in so they can sell us something. They're not thinking they're trying to get us to come in so that they can help us, you know, get in shape and feel awesome about ourselves. Their guard's up a little bit. So what we've got to do is we've got to replace that thought in their head with reality. So, Miranda, let me tell you how this works. What we do, and, and this is where we insert our offer or we insert whatever it is that we do. So if it's a free week, a free day, whatever it is, this is where we put it. So, Miranda. Um, let me explain to you how this works. What we do is we actually allow you to come in and train without any obligation to continue, okay? We do it for two reasons. This is where we replace her thinking, well, they're gonna sell me. We do it for two reasons. Reason number one is because we want you to actually experience our workout and see if you like it. Because that's kind of important to you getting in shape is actually liking what you do, right? And the other reason, Reason number two is so that we can actually figure out what program makes the most sense for you. Does that sound good? Sounds great. All right. <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked that. You work days or nights? Now, you work days. Okay, great. I asked right you. Now, actually. Okay. Well, you're calling from work. I won't tell your boss, okay? <laughs> Thank you. So here's the thing. Do you work days or nights? Okay. I ask that because one, I want to talk about uh, actually if they have a job, that's kind of important because I'm going to sell them a membership at some point. They got to have a job, right? And the other is schedule. I don't know when to schedule it, right? If they work nights, I don't want to try to schedule them at night, right? And if they say, 
uh, you know, I don't want to come out and be like, yo, you employed? You got a job? Like, if you want to do this, you're going to be able to pay for it? I don't want to do that. So you work days or nights, right? They tell me, now I'm going to book the appointment. Okay, awesome. You work days. Um, I've got two options for you. I've got tonight at 5.30 or tomorrow at 5.30. Which one works best? I'll come in tonight. Okay. I give them two options. I don't say, can you come in? I don't say, will you? Do you want to? I know they want to. That's why they filled out the damn lead form. They do want to. I have to now, I'm demonstrating leadership. I help their fears, their fear of being a beginner, their fear of not fitting in, their fear of being sold. Now it's time to start telling them what needs to happen. And what needs to happen is you need to show up tonight or tomorrow. Which one is it? Pick one. Okay? And if you're getting tonight more than tomorrow, you're killing the call. Perfect. They get it more excited. Okay? So we're going to make sure we're doing that. Book the time. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to give them a picture of, like, what it's going to be like when they show up so they're not wondering. Right? Afraid of the dark scenario here. Okay, Miranda, here's the deal. I'm going to text you the address right to my door so you know how to get here the whole night. And then what we're going to do is when you get here, you're going to see me. I'm going to be right there. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick tour. We're going to chat a little bit more about your goals and, and all that good stuff, answer any questions you might have and all that. Okay, so does this sound good to you? Sound great. Okay, awesome. Give her some instructions on what to bring, that kind of thing. Okay? Done. She's showing up. She's going to be early, actually. I know her. You just tell by the call. Okay? <laughs> right? How excited I am. Got excited. Okay? That's how we do it. So that's the follow up plan. That's the voicemail that we leave. And that's how we have the conversation with people. We allay their fear. We help them with their apprehension. We help them with what they're scared of, and they'll show up. Did you hear me say anything about my certifications, how clean my damn school is, what the gym looks like? None of that. How many championships I won. I was on Ultimate Fighter Season 7. None of that. I didn't say none of it. It's all true. Okay? But I didn't say it because it doesn't matter. You're scared. I got to get you over it. Okay? That's it. I need a sip of coffee. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> All right, what do we got for questions? Because we got to get wrapping it. We do, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I want to say a couple of things to everyone who's been putting questions in. Yes, there will be a recording, so you can go back through the scripts, that entire role play scenario that we just did, anything that you need to, anytime that will be available right after the webinar is finished. Um, and also, if we miss your questions, feel free to shoot them over to info at membersolutions.com. We're going to go through now, um, or Eric is going to go through how you actually manage this whole process. So everyone stick with us, even though we know it's been about an hour. Thank you for, for staying with us. We know this process is really important. And this last section is going to help you really seal the deal and, and help you put it into practice immediately, which we recommend that you do. Don't don't wait on this. Go ahead and, and do it right away. That while it's fresh in your mind and, and this can take effect immediately. You can start doing these things today, tomorrow, and it will have an impact. So back That's over good. to you, Eric. Just wanted to let everyone know what and, we had about that next. I'm gonna time. add to the one more don't. Don't worry about doing it perfect. Okay. I do it perfect because I've been doing it over and over every day for 30 years. Okay, well, I'm, I'm adding a couple years in there, but it's close enough, okay? But I practice, listen, I wrote the book on it and I still practice it every day. I just practiced it right now. It's going to take your practice. Don't worry about being perfect. Just understand the fundamental of it. I got to help people not be so scared. I got to help them overcome their fear of showing up, okay? If I do that, they show up more, okay? Very important. So, so just implement what you can remember what you what you can do and, and go back to the recording and, and watch it again okay yeah. you can also follow me on different multi, what is it social media stuff instagram youtube 
there's stuff on there that I, I do trainings that are free that you that'll help you with a lot of this stuff as well. So jump in on that as well. It'll help you. The process will guide you through it too. Yes. And you'll get better and better at it. Just like when you first started everything else. Okay. Um, all right. I see that question that came up. Book a call with Corey. Book a, book a time. I know I'm kind of doing this outside of member solutions. Get on Corey's schedule. Book a time and I'm going to help you with that one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And then um, the other one about pricing. When you're doing this properly, pricing comes up less and less. But if you are getting price questions, always agree and always tell them that you do want to, to give them price, right? Instead of disagree, well, I'd like to have you show up first. I'd like to have that. None of that. I'd love to give you prices. Okay? You come right out of Gates, Miranda, and you say, hey, how much is it to train with you? Miranda, I'd love to give you the pricing for your program. The pricing depends ultimately on which one you, which program you end up choosing. Okay, so let's see if we can kind of figure this out a little bit. Do you uh, have you ever trained before? Or is this brand new? Brand new. I'm in. Okay, that's it. And then when I explain how it works, that lets them know, hey, I'm gonna, it's gonna help us figure out what program. How do I give you a price on a program? I don't know which one it is. Okay, when you handle it that way, the price question goes away. They ask it because they don't know what to answer. Ask you. And when you answer it properly and you agree that you look, ultimately you got to give them a price. How are you going to sell a membership if you don't give them price? Yet we act like we can't give them price. Answer the question. Look, it depends on the program you pick. Let me let's see if we can narrow this down. They get satisfied because they feel like you're going to narrow it down over the phone, and then your phone conversation leads to a, an appointment. See how this works? Okay. Only took me, you know, a couple of years to figure it out. All right, let me show you. Let's get into this and wrap it up. Sorry. I had to answer that though. It was like bugging me. I didn't. Yeah, that's an important one. That that comes up so often. It makes sense to answer that question. All right, sharing screen. Here we go. Can you see it? Do you yes, see my screen? I can see it. You can. Yep. Drop a yes yeah. in, the chat, in the chat box if you can see it, just to make sure everybody. everybody can. Well, if you can see it, I'm pretty sure they they can see it. I just. Um, want to make sure that I'm sure you can see my little menu over here though Miranda because I think there's a little delay in the chat box Yes, I can. okay cool okay so this is actually member manager now a couple things with this one if you have member manager cool um, you can actually get this this follow-up thing that I'm going to show you um, from member solutions they'll, they'll give it to you as part of this um, and, and teach you how to set it up and all that good stuff I'm not going to teach you how to set up I'm just going to kind of show you how it works so that you can see how you would automate what you're doing. If you don't have it, member manager, um, Miranda will will talk about that, I guess. <laughs> She'll help you out with that, all right? But let me show you. you really quickly, if you don't, and you like what you see, or you just want to learn more, um, you can click that link that's pinned to the top of the chat box, and you can get in touch with us. That's all I'll say for now. I can, I can give you a little more information later on. Okay, cool. So here it is. We're inside. It's called Member Manager. We're inside the dashboard. In the setup, we have these things in marketing that are called lead flows. Okay. Now, again, I'm, I'm not going to show you how to set this up per se. I'm just showing you how you're going to organize and manage your follow-up so that you don't have to remember it and you don't have to deal with it. So in the lead flows, if I click it, it takes me to the screen where I got to put in my password again. Sorry. Um, hold on. I don't even know it. It's it's actually Members Solutions software. One second. Um, I'd, I'd have Miranda give it to me over the webinar, but that probably isn't, isn't up to security protocol. Hey, it worked. Okay, we're back in. All right, so in the in the main menu here, I'm going to setup and I'm going to marketing so that I can look at the lead flows in here and you can add them and all that good stuff. But this is basically what it looks like. So for each lead flow, this is basically, the flow is the follow-up. It's just really another word for the, fo the follow-up of what you're doing with the lead. You can set up your lead flows based on what their interest is. So uh, for self-defense, you have a self-defense lead flow. And all of the texts and the emails are going to be related to that, which is what you want, right? So if weight loss is is what they're interested in, 
then you want to put them in the weight loss lead flow. If it's youth martial arts or youth programs, then you want to put them in that. You can have one for every single interest that is out there for a prospect. Stress, um, improving their energy, those kind of things. You have a lead flow for each specific one. Then over here, it tells you what is in it, right? So there's 10 actions in this lead flow, okay? So here's what it looks like. Day one, call, okay? Now, this call, it's in there. What's going to happen is it's going to actually put that call on your schedule to make it, okay? So you put the call in, check that it, you did it, and now the call is recorded in the software, the, the notification is gone, and it's on the prospect's activity log that you called them. So you can literally see how many calls are being made, what's going on with each specific prospect um, without having to go back and trying to you know, talk to somebody about what they did or what they didn't do. Okay, if it's recorded, it's done. Day one, you see the email here as well, okay? That's an email that's gonna go out automatically. So now, what's missing for day one? Two calls and one text. So what I would do is I would come up here, I'd click add, name it, right? Put the description of what it is, when it's gonna go out, and I can even assign it to certain staff members if I have one particular like uh, staff member that is handling like a program director so that this is all, they're getting notified to it. What is the action? Automated text, okay? What is the message, okay? And then we select what the message would be from there, okay? And then I save and I exit. And now it's gonna be added into day one. Okay, it's that simple to add something new. I said I wasn't gonna show you, but it's so simple, I just did. <laughs> all right, and then it's gonna show up any kind of activity or any kind of, um, Actions that you take get recorded inside of your uh, prospects and leads. Let's click this real quick. Pull somebody up. Okay. So this is Mike Smith. Here's my co contact log. Okay. Whoever's handling this prospect, I got to talk to because there's no tasks, no messages, nothing. Okay. That's bad. <laughs> all right. But it records all of it for you. So everything stays nice and neat and organized and you don't miss a call and you don't get behind on stuff you and you and it creates a, a task list so that well we just went into infinity land and so you create a task list so that it's organized and you, and you get it done right and it's recorded on the prospect so now i can follow up my salesperson and i can say okay what's going on with this lead man it's like three weeks old Man, I've been calling it. I've been email. It's been, you know, I go into activity. Uh, there ain't, you're missing some calls here, right? It happens, but you can get down to business with it. And and when you log in, it says, okay, here's your calls you got to make. Call call these people. And the software is saying, hey man, you do your job because I emailed them and I text them. Now you got to do your job. Do your calls. Okay, so I like that about software too. That is Keep nice. Accountable. Your most reliable employee, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Can we incorporate that in the member manager? That would be great. You log in. Hey, man, this is Mr. Member Manager over here. I sent out the emails you asked me to, and I sent out the text. You got to make your calls, man. Get on it. Call your people. Of the month. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. I, I do want to mention too that the the lead flows that you were just showing everyone. Those are your emails. So in case anyone was wondering, those were designed by Eric. Those emails were written by him. He allowed us to incorporate them into member managers so that you would get them automatically if you use the software. Oh. Um, so yeah, that's just a, just a little value add because we want you to be able to use these things successfully. Yeah, and you, and you don't gotta worry about what do I say in an email? What do I do here? It's, it's just done. Just plug in and go. Exactly. Worry about what you do best. And, and exactly. do your thing and get and, and sell. Okay, you gotta get good at selling. Don't forget that. Well, to wrap it up here, I really wanna thank everyone for, for staying with us, even though we went a little over our time. It was really fun to, to get to answer everyone's questions and to make this really interactive. 
we hope you enjoyed it. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, again, if you have questions that we did not get to because of our time constraints today, feel free to shoot them over to info at membersolutions.com. Uh, Eric and I talk all the time. If there's a question that he needs to answer rather than member solutions, I'll make sure I get it over to him for you. Um, and also, we do have a couple of freebies for everyone uh, for being on the live call today and, and for, for joining us here. We truly do want to help you be successful. Um, I, I know that everyone says that, but really, we do believe that what you do is important. We want to empower you to do more of that and sp spend less time on the admin work and the operational details. We know you need to do that in order to have a successful business, though. So we want to make it easier for you. Um, and we, we want to give you a couple of things today specifically. If you go to that link that I provided in the chat box, membersolutions.com slash ghost, that's specific to this webinar. And if you go there and you fill out the form, you're going to get a free guide from us that actually goes into some essential marketing strategies for you. So we focused on the sales process today, but if you're looking to fill in some gaps on the marketing side too, that's a great resource for you. And then if you want help just going through all the information that we gave you today, how to put it into practice, maybe you want to use it in, in our software or just see what that might look like, um, we're happy to talk through all of that with you and you will get a free strategy session if you fill out that form as well. This is not, um, like Eric said, this is, this is not for the purpose of selling you on it. This is for the purpose of seeing if this would be a good fit for your business and if we can help each other here, if we would be good partners. So Awesome. You guys need to jump on that. Let's go. <laughs> Click the link. Let's get it done. Um, and feel free, talk. everyone, too, Eric, uh, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you if they want to do that directly? Uh, Instagram, YouTube, Eric Charles Russell, the artist selling memberships. Um, I know it's weird when I say Eric Charles Russell, like who, what's the deal with his middle name? There's, a, there's like a bunch of Eric Russells, I guess, that are out there. So, um, yeah, Eric Charles Russell, look me up, follow me on Instagram. I, I do a bunch of stuff over there. You can message me on there and I, I do a bunch of stuff on YouTube as well. And you know, I'm on Facebook, all that good stuff. So just go in there and Perfect. click around and, You'll find me. <laughs> Amazon. <to answer. laughs> well, thank you everyone so much for, for joining us today. That link will be available to you at any point. Uh, the webinar recording will be out to you shortly as well. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Good to see everybody. Nice talking with you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you it. Better.